So can you take us through your journey since you started um, the world, in, in the world of boxing and how you grew in the, in the sport since you turned pro? Um, I, I actually started boxing with the hope of um, not to be bullied. Um, back in Nigeria, uh, also I have too many boys as a sibling. So um, started, as, as I said, it's just like uh, something that I just wanted to do to actually defend myself. And I didn't know how good I was um, naturally with the with the boxing ability that I've got and um, before I know it I was the Lego State um, Lego State champion at the Bantamweight and the move up to represent Lagos in the National Sport First um, National Sport Festival in Emo 98 won gold um, two years after I went the I went to um Bao Chi two thousand National Sport Festival again. Um but that um in two thousand um sport festival I was um welterweight, I've moved up weight and also captured gold in that um tournament. Uh since then it's been that's that's how the journey started and um yeah let's talk about family now did you get support from your family um all the way because we know some parents back then they didn't support their kids who were interested in sports uh actually i have to i have to keep you on the low key my parent found out that i was boxing when they saw me on the national tv <laughs> wow so um <laughs> i didn't i didn't tell anyone I always tell my mom I'm going to listen, which um the after school club or something like that. But she she saw me on the national TV, and that's when the support started. Cause um at the at the competition I also won the best boxer that night. This was um um a Coca Cola company just opened in um a Jibu or somewhere in. In Lagos, then so it was an ex exhibition bout, and it was it was televised on um, NTA TV, NTA News, something like that. So yeah, and um, ever since my mom, specifically, kind of like she, she was she was support she was supportive of it ever since. Now, when you got to the UK, uh, were you ever underrated by the trainers and the boxing gyms out there? Was I underrated? Yeah, were you underrated? Were you given a chance or were you no. looked down on? Not at all. I wasn't underrated at all. Mm -hmm. um, you have to remember, I also represented Nigeria at the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. So, um, I was well known within the gym. And boxing is you people can look at you until you jump in the ring. Even from doing shadow boxing, people can tell if you're good or not. But the fact that they see that I have a I have a good um, amateur pedigree, so I was I was respected from the beginning. But the business side of it and the the little um, what do you call it the politics behind the boxing can be very design which um very discouraging whereby nobody wants to fight you yeah. because they think you might be too good um for yourself so and this has been told i have been told this before that i was too good for my own good okay. so nobody wanted to take the risk in the sport, I see it as a dangerous sport. A lot of uh, lads who want to get into the sport, they're actually scared that they might lose a tooth or something. Can you let us know how dangerous the, the, the sport is? Uh, boxing, it's a complete gentleman sport. Yeah. And a lot of people uh, mistake boxing from fighting. Yeah. Um, everyone can fight, but not everyone can box. And um, yes, it can be dangerous, and so did every other sport. Almost every sport is dangerous. So even the the cyclist, boxing, you just have to. If you're not serious, you can't do boxing half-hearted. 
So is either you're in or you're out. So if you do it partially, yes, you can get hurt. And also, as much as it's a gentleman's sport, it's also brutal. Yeah. Um, you just have to be prepared for it mentally. So um, for me, I think boxing is, is, uh, is something that made me who I am today. And boxing actually saved my life. All right. Now, what was your defining moment in your career, and how did you get to manage it? Uh, my defining moment uh, uh, is it. You know what? I would say my defining moment was when I left Nigeria. Oh wow! In boxing, I know it's, but that that's the that's the bitter truth. Hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the opportunity to be able to actually showcase my, my, my talent around the world or for people to know who Larry Rekunda is because we haven't been given that opportunity. Yeah. And it's not just myself. Look at every other um, um, athlete as well that we seem to have to, to um, get out there to make it happen. But I also, I would say, winning prize fighter was also my divine moment um, in the professional ranking, so yeah. Would you also say that um, we do not have the facilities to en enable the boxers here to get better? Is that one of the reasons why they get to leave to make it out there? Facilities, we do need facilities. Mm. However, with the coaches and we actually manage everything we have in Nigeria. We've got amazing coaches in Nigeria. We've got amazing fighters in Nigeria. But what we lack is a support. It's a support that we need. And I've said this so many times. So many uh, media, look at, the, look at the Afrobeats, look at the um, uh, Nollywood. They have, they, they, they're constantly being shown on the national TV. And so the football, but we show the um, European leagues and, and all these things. People get emotionally attached to these footballers, to these actors, to this musician. But boxers, we haven't got that platform. The TV platform goes a very long way because people get to see what you do. And people, eventually, people will eventually get emotionally attached to you because they can see. But our fighters don't get televised like that uh, and I've said this so many times as well where if we have a TV channel that dedicates even if it's just one night or one morning out of the week for just the grassroots boxes for them to be shown I think that would that would help um, these maybe sponsorship or anything like that and the, the boxing have to the boxing the, the, the support will eventually come. That all we need is a good support where the facilities, you can have the best facilities in the country. But if you stay in the country and fight the same fighter, you're not going to improve because you, you'll get used to who you're fighting. These guys need to, be, these guys need to come out of the country. They should have exits. Um, go out the, around the world. To, to learn something different, to see something different. So to me, I think that's very crucial yeah. for um, the athlete to have that, that opportunity to be able to go around the world and we don't have to worry about, oh, if we go to the, to the Olympic or we go to the World Championship, if we don't prepare properly, we can't achieve any goal in it. Mm -hmm. So we need, we need a good preparation and get the boys out and the girls, get them out of the country. Let them have a training talk now and then. Mm. All right. Now, in 2012, you won three fights in one night. I mean, I need to understand, how were you able to achieve that feat? Um, so you're talking about prize fighters. So prize fighter was uh, one of the biggest tournaments in professional ranking. Mm. Um, and it's so funny because... I only had two fights to my name as a pro, um, in professional. And my third outing, I, I, I faced someone that was ranked number 10 at the time in the world. For me, 
he's just a opportunity really for me to show to showcase my talent it's televised it's watch around the world and just to also prove that there's so many talented fighters in Nigeria or Africa yeah. and if we're given the opportunity we would we will rule the world so that's what happened and mm. I I didn't just fight there to to win the prize fighter but also want to make a statement because it's never been done for anyone to win prize fighter with only two fights to their name wow mm. now you and your coach what's the relationship what uh, the relationship between yourself and your coach um my coach then he retired now because of the politics of boxing. Um, he's like my father. He's like my 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 brother. We have a very good relationship. Also, my coach that started me off, his name is Adekunle Fasheso. Um, they call him Ashukoshachimata. My relationship with him up to now is still like my father. He's a father figure for me. I started at the age of 12, and this man's been nurturing me from when I was from when I was a kid. And you know, everything I know today came from him. He taught me that. So, and there's other Nigerian coaches there, like the head coach as well, um, Joe Mensa. These are the guys that actually got me to where I am and who I am today. Oh. So I always have a good relationship with my coaches. All right, let's talk about um, Ife Ajagba. This is another man everyone is looking up to for greatness. Do you think he has what it takes to be heavyweight champion in the future? 100%. 100%. He's one of the most fearful fighters now, um, even though he hasn't fought for world title yet. But, again, we need to support him. Yeah. We need to support him because having to fight... It's easy, but getting the support and prepare for the fight properly is the hardest part. And training camp costs money. True. And also, every little help goes a long way. And this is what I, I want even the young ones to know. It's not only financial support, but also we need to have like, a, um, like what you guys are doing. You don't know how far these go. This is massive. This is to get the message across to the rest of the, to the Nigerians and Africans people. So every little help can go a very long way. So we need to support him and every other fighters. Why do we have to leave the country before we become someone? So, but when, when, we, become, when we become someone, that's when everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon. Sure. But you guys then, you guys would get upset because you think someone else is trying to take your place because you're Nigerian. So automatically, these fighters, these athletes should consider you to be part of the team straight away. But you guys can do it, but you don't want to, you don't want to be part of it because we are nobody then. So if the guys that you help from grassroots and build them up to become a world champion, we always have you on the front row and always have you with them all the time and respect you. So you don't need to try and beg to take a photo opportunity with these top fighters so, or athletes because they know where all this comes from. So you, we need to support all the grassroots from now and the ones that's, the one that's outside the country and making and changing the perception of Nigeria around the world because people know us as dubious people, but we're doing something positive. We're keeping the flag flying high and putting our name on the radar yeah. on, the, on the top athletes in the world. So we need to support our own people. Very true. Now, where do you see yourself in your career within the next 10 years? Um, life... Life, life is very important. Uh, I, I would like to see myself alive, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, I want prize fighter um, after two fights in my name and less than three to four months, mm -hmm. something else happened where I, a family issue 
where I have to stay away from boxing for over two years. So this, you never know. But the main thing is to be alive and healthy and also help the young youth in Nigeria coming up and have an exit. So I, this is what I, what I wanted to do myself and have my own gym where we can have fighters coming from Nigeria to come around. Look, not everyone's going to be a world champion. True. My goal is to become a world champion one day. Wow. If it happens, it happens. But I want to make sure there's other guys that will have um, the young youth in Nigeria get the opportunity to come up Nigeria and make Nigerian proud and be part of the people that make Nigerian great in the boxing or any other sports. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, True. that's what I see myself in 10 years, having my own gym, winning a world title and helping the young Nigerian um, yeah. boxers. All right, we'll keep supporting that dream. Now, we're expecting you to give us a pro fight in Nigeria. Should we expect this to happen very soon? Well, I meant to fight in Nigeria last year. Didn't happen. And also, that cost me a whole year for not having to fight. The guys that organized the show tried everything to make sure it happened. So, I'm going to say massive thank you to Saula Promotion. So he tried everything, but people let him down. So, hey, what can you do? Uh, but that cost me a whole year without fighting. Fight. I was being inactive. So, again, we need a boxing, a good infrastructure in Nigeria. We're talking about having a big fight like Anthony Joshua and these big people there. But yeah. we can't even have me to fight for WBO, um, WBO Intercontinental. But this is what I'm saying. But we need to we need to start changing that mindset and just just support our own, really. All right. Thank you very much, Larry, for speaking with us today. Thank you for having me. All right. Continue to stay safe out there. I will keep supporting your dream. Thank you, my brother. Really appreciate it. All right, Larry Akundayo, the natural, speaking with us this morning. And uh, when you hear things like this you would always feel encouraged wanting to support the ones coming through the ranks. Exactly. I mm. mean, if Anthony Joshua could do it, yeah. who doesn't represent Nigeria? If if Jagba could do it, if Larry Kundaya could do it, I mean, the likes of Tony Sugar Salam can definitely do mm -hmm. it. I mean, we've got great boxers among different ranks from the welterweight yeah. up until the heavyweight, and not only in boxing, but in UFC as well. Mm -hmm. We see that we have talented individuals who can do great in any sport in the world. Personally, it pains me so much that Nigerians have to leave the country before they can get their dreams. I mean, I have a close personal friend who wants to become an athlete. Sincerely speaking, if he doesn't represent Nigeria, I can't fault him because this country has done nothing to help him get to where he is today. Mm. So I believe that narrative needs to change. change the government yeah. needs to wake up. Um, us, as a people, we need to support our own. It's not when they've made it that we then begin to lay claim them. to them. No, mm. support them all the way from the grassroots level till they get to that big international platform. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to do better as a nation and sure. the government also needs to do better.